All right. So as I'm working on this finishing layer, I want don't want to ignore anything. So what I'll often do is I'll turn off the other layers to see how much I've covered. You can see what I've done. So I see areas that I, I can work on some more because I want that slipperiness of my uh, new finishing brush to come through. It works. Sometimes I'll even play with taking down the base painting a little bit. while I'm doing my finishing painting because then it, it helps me, um, gives me more confidence in where I, it still needs work. That makes sense. So as I set up to, to finish this off, especially at the, the areas that I haven't worked on so much, I'm gonna take my, the opacity of my base painting layer down by about half, All right? Big difference there, All right? It's not going anywhere, it can always come back. But you can see everywhere I have the, a lot of finishing painting, the base painting layer going away doesn't seem to hurt, right? Let's take it down to yeah, about 55. And then I could have the Toulouse-Lautrec behind, but that's going to distract a little bit because you'll have all these lines and things from it that are annoying. So instead of having the Toulouse-Lautrec painting behind, Let's just bring in some texture. So I found this uh, texture overlay provided by a designer on Pixlr of butcher paper. It's just a scan of butcher paper, you know, something really basic. So I can put that in the background. There you see it behind my refined painting layers, but let's move it behind everything. Right. And you can see it's high enough resolution, you know, it really works. And I might take that opacity down a little bit. I don't need it quite so solid. And I might play with its levels a little bit, brighten its midtones. Might even play with its color a little bit. Shift a little bit more towards the greens and the blues, cyans. Just until it feels like a paper I would use, right? Okay. Now if I turn off everything except my sketch, you can see how that sketch looks right, right on that paper. All right, so let's lock that in there. I wonder what would happen if I moved this behind and turned it on. Yeah, so we just get little, little variations at the edges. And that could be nice as I put my low opacity base painting layer there, which now doesn't look at all um, as granulated as it does when it's at 100%. And I'll show you a trick. I could take this and I can make a duplicate of it. All right. Turn off the original. I'm going to mark the original red so I remember what it is. And then I'm going to Gaussian blur this granulated <laughs> copy. Not quite that much, but you can see the granulation there. I'm going to blur it just a little bit, like that. And then when I duplicate it, 
it will also duplicate that, that blurriness. You see? And then if I do it even more, even more, and if I duplicate that, then we get kind of a nice soft underpainting underneath. So there's a difference between, let me merge those together. That's the soft underpainting, which I think I'm going to end up using, versus the hard-edged underpainting. All right, so this versus this. So I'm going to take that soft one, move it down to 55% or so, and then lock these so I don't accidentally paint on them. Work on the finishing painting. Still using a fairly big brush. Being a little bit more aggressive now. Kind of seeing what I want. And defining the places I haven't reached so much. and anything else that's kind of bugging me. I really didn't tackle the eyes at all since the base painting. And I know they're there. All I have to do is turn on that red layer and I see that the eyes are there. This gives me a chance to give them a little bit more depth. When in doubt for a good color to use around the eyes, red, very helpful. Irishman, I can give him a glint of green in his eyes. Kind of manufacturing a nice romantic highlight there. And because this is on the, the topmost painting layer, that should stay even when I have more opacity in my um, background layer. And I'm looking at the, the navigator for that more far away look as well. Keep getting pulled away from the tie and the flower. 
but I need to at least give them enough attention so they don't look conspicuously un undealt with. And you know you have the right kind of brush settings when you just feel like you can, to most extents, just draw with it. Like you would with crayons. You don't have to be too suspicious or fussy. And especially, you don't have to worry about it lagging on you a lot. I just love the unlimited amount of color I get to use. Even when it's digital painting. Such a difference, just those little finishing strokes make. Framing it all in. I've intentionally not made his neck very dark. I don't want it to be a big sharp arrow. I think that's a failing of the photograph to have so much contrast there that pulls away from focus on his face. But I can try to play with this glimmer of his tie and a little bit of the contrast in these these borders, which I think is int are interesting, as long as I don't let it distract too much. And you see how Toulouse Lautrec will often just kind of use some hatching. I think this is a good technique to finish off an area. Just kind of say, yeah, I know it's there, but I don't want you to pay too much attention to it. Turns it from being a focal point to just being kind of a texture backdrop. And I'll mix compliments in with that too. So I'm saving it because my brush was starting to lag a little bit. I can look at it while it's saving, which is going very slow. And I can see the difference this refined painting is making. And it looks kind of specific to that era, which I'm very happy about. In many ways, it's becoming the most formal of the portrait demos I've done. 